you can share the screen now Thakur sir, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Today is all light now. Is there tension? No, it's just. Sir, Rojdi, what is tension? We are live. Hello, Neeraj. Hi. Hi. So, good afternoon, everyone. We welcome you all to Ortho TV online. And today we have this uh, Tuesdays with AJT, and we have with us Dr. Thakur, Dr. Rajendra Chandak, and Dr. Alok Kumre. so over to dr rajendra chandak to introduce the topic today sir we talking on the phone yeah uh, there, there was a short uh, miscommunication so yeah i am there okay so dr alok you can take over yeah so good morning everyone like good afternoon and i welcome thakur sir for his uh, weekly series and uh, today is a interesting topic and uh, i would like to uh, hand over to thakur sir for initiating the proceedings thank you umre and thank you neeraj uh, for this uh, ongoing projection of various topics proficiency in project presentation program is not no longer a matter of choice or specialized skill it is now almost a survival survival skill every professional must know that lack of computer skills in modern physician is not acceptable according to neeraj pishlani these two programs powerpoint and keynote have become extremely popular and they are synonymous with presentation in fact people don't even mention presentation they say the powerpoint or keynote and they are very easy to make you can always start and make a presentation uh, in few minutes and that is the problem <clears throat> that is bad for presentation because whenever you do a thing you got to do it right and what is right what is wrong that is what we are going to discuss today <clears throat> once you get an invest invest invitation to speak you must ask first thing what is the purpose of the presentation what are you going to talk why why you have been asked to uh, speak there what is the purpose and then what message you want to give to your audience there has to be a message in every talk otherwise it becomes a ramble it doesn't become a and then who is the audience talk for a first year medical student and a group of professors has to be at different level so you got to know your audience very well and what is the size of meeting that is important because then accordingly you can arrange all your presentation tricks in such a way that it becomes effective for a very large meeting these days meetings tend to be very large 400 to 500 people in a hall is a small thing usually uh, 900 to 1000 people we address so you have to make arrangements in your presentation so that the last man in the row can read your presentation clearly so size of the meeting is also important and screen arrangements all these days we had just a slide projector and we knew what was its capacity nowadays we have this led projectors led led screens they are very very strong light sources and it the brightness is so much that it hurts people's eyes sitting in the first three four rows so you have to make provision for that brightness by changing the background screen so everybody can see it with comfort and without their eyes being hurt so all these factors are essential when you get an invitation you must make enquiry if you don't get answers get back to the organizer and ask him what are the answers 
and then you take a plain paper and start your presentation, not on your computer, but just on a pen, sheet of paper and a pen, pencil, and put down what you would like to tell the audience. And once you have figured out your message, then work it in small groups, that number of slides that you will require, and also what you will put on each slide. Put it down on a piece of paper, and then start the computer. <clears throat> Lecture provides us with but a fleeting opportunity to make a point. You cannot go on and on and on in the lecture. So you have to utilize that time in the best way. These days, uh, the, the bigger conferences offer you eight minutes or 10 minutes, or even as less as three minutes. In one of the conferences, I was asked to speak for three minutes on a topic. So you have to give your message in the time provided to you. So for that, you had to work on it. You had to work on the time, how much time, and accordingly you can do that. When it comes to time planning, you got to think about these two gentlemen, these two detectives, Sherlock Holmes and Colombo. Sherlock Holmes being more famous, everybody knows he was a, uh, he was a detective living in London, Baker Street, and had several stories famous about him. But in the novels, one only finds out who is the murderer on the final page. Till the last two, three pages, you do not know what is happening, what is the outcome, what is the punchline. So if last three pages are lost, the reading that novel, that book is useless. Similar, <coughs> so in the Sherlock Holmes style, you disclose the important thing in the last minute or two. And there is the other fellow called Colombo. He was also a homicide detective in American TV, TV serial of the same name. And it was very popular between 1968 and 2003. The actor was Peter Falk, and this is his on-screen presence. In Colombo uh, episodes, you saw the murder being committed in the first five minutes. The audience knew in first five minutes who committed the murder. The rest of the story was how Detective Colombo found it out. So, <clears throat> what the gist of these two stories is that when you have a sh very limited time, in the first two to three minutes, you tell them the most important thing. You give your punchline up front. Because in the first two to three minutes, 95% of the audience is attentive. After that, they usually doze off or start talking to their friends. So in the first few minutes, you let them know. No. In medical presentations, stay with Colombo. Disclose your most important points in the first two, three minutes, and then tell them how you found it out, your experimentation and other things. Classically, we follow the pattern of uh, introduction, material, method, results, discussion and conclusion. But in Colombo method, or when the time is short, which is usually a short time in most of the conferences, deliver the punchline upfront and then follow it up with details. That in this way, if you are late or for some reason, uh, you are not able to deliver your punchline at the last minute, the whole thing is lost. But if you have done that upfront, some minor details are gone, it really doesn't matter. You have still made your point very, very clear. Having done all that, then first thing you do is decide what is the background of your slide. The background is very important. And there are thousands and thousands of backgrounds available in the Microsoft program. And you have all these fancy stuffs all of them distract. You have designs and pictures in the background, they distract. It's impossible to read uh, what is the title, what are the details with this uh, tree in the background. Pattern backgrounds reduce legibility. You may have hundreds of photographs like this, please don't use it. 
the same message on a plain background is so nicely clear to you. But putting against Jaffrey, you don't see anything. Avoid ready-made backgrounds. All the standard Microsoft PowerPoint templates stink and they stink horribly. So don't use them, just forget them. What you could do, here are some examples what people have actually used in their presentation. Can you read half the thing that is being shown here? Again, you can't read in that. This presentation has all the details, but the, the background is so dominating that you cannot concentrate on the details available. So, and it's very habitual of people to use the picture of their institution in the background. And some people go to the extent of splashing the topic of their talk right on the face of their institute. Well, such kind of topic, one would have been better or one could have represented a little differently by putting something like this. <clears throat> This kind of introductory slide would have been more effective than splashing the subtitle subject on the face of an institution. We see such titles very, very often. It makes no sense which town that fellow is. I am not bothered. <coughs> Mumbai, my hospital can be clearly seen. This kind of slide is usually of no use. And as if one fancy background is inadequate, some people change the background with every slide. Here is an example, there are 10 slides and you can see 10 different backgrounds. Not only that, look at the line of the, line of the table. Nothing is in one line. So this kind creates a very poor impression of the love. As if you are being taken on a tour of uh, some beautiful land, and you'll forget all about the paper that he is being talking about, but only concentrate on the background, as if it's a travel log, travel program. <laughs> so don't do this. Avoid multiple backgrounds in one presentation. One standard clean background that is adequate. All such things are unsuitable for medical presentation. They take the listener's attention from the main topic of your talk to the background and they start enjoying the background and not your talk. That's defeating the purpose. Blue background is very classic. Everything should be made as simple as possible, if not simpler. White or blue background. <clears throat> Yellow and dark background is also very, very impressive. It, uh, one can very, very clearly read these things, they stand out. Good judgment comes from experience and experience comes from bad judgment. These quotations are just for pleasure. They don't have any relevance to the present investigation, but just to say black and yellow, black lettering on yellow background is the most visible. If you see on the road, all the danger signs are on yellow background with black lettering everywhere around the world. So this is the most visible combination. Black lettering on yellow background. If all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. <coughs> Strategies point the way, tactics deliver the results. This is again a useful... <coughs> If your time and come, not even Corona can kill you. <laughs> this should be some kind of need. So choose a simple background and lettering so that people only pay attention to the message that is coming on it and do not get distracted by whatever else they say in this. These are some live examples which people have used and I have just brought them up for your use, your visual. These are very nice slides made, and there we are. White on black is a very attractive proposition. 
and it has got a very sharp contrast. You can read it very well, but it's not a natural type of reading. It's poor ambient light, hall becomes very dark, and, and if it's a long lecture, it leaves the audience a little depressed. The reverse of this is also, yeah, because of these LED screens, these days uh, one tends to use a little shaded portion. Uh, graded uh, thing that makes it quite a good impression and also good background. Also reduces the glare of those bright screens on the front rows. And uh, this, this kind of uh, screen background is becoming quite popular because of the projection change. But if you are using ordinary light projection, then any, any of those slides are very good. <coughs> Black on white. This is the natural way that we read every day. This is sharp contrast. All our newspaper are black and white. White background, black lettering. So we are used to reading like this, so we can read faster. The hall has got ample, ample light and leaves the audience a little cheerful. It's just a summary of what we just said. In, when you choose a background, remove all the unnecessary details in the background. Just leave it as plain as possible. When you add something, don't think in terms of decoration, but think of communication. If what you are adding to the slide is going to send your message strongly and targeted to the audience, then do that addition. If not, just don't, don't add anything extra. Don't think of it decorating the slide, but how effective your communication can become. Everything that you add to a slide must make a positive impact on your message. Then only it is worth adding. You may have thousands of patients' uh, profile, and if it is not making your point more clearer, then don't add it. We know you are you have hundreds of cases of that particular time. One classic example I remember is uh, Elizaro. Elizaro himself came to Bombay. 1987, 23rd of February. And he gave a lecture in Bombay Hospital. He was so unknown that in that hall, there were only three or four orthopedic surgeons. I was, of course, there. Dr. Uh, Dr. Um, Anil Paralka from Borivli and JCN, not J. Taraparwala was there. Only three of us, I remember, and Dr. Pradhan was the organizer. And Elizaro went on showing one after the second, third, several <laughs> cases, so much so that the time ran out. And then, but the thing was so interesting that the organizer said that, okay, you go to a smaller room, and that there were only 10 people, 10 orthopedic interested people, and we heard that. So it was sort of boring presentation, but his work was so novel that we just tolerated it. I'm sure later on he improved his skills with others' help and gave only a few cases, but leg lengthening, he would go on showing one after other 15 cases of tibia limb lengthening. Even the most interested will go to sleep, won't he? So you have to do representative work, just a few things and then get on. My choice is a simple design, plain background and large and bold lettering. That is my choice, hardly any decoration. Having chosen the background, now we go to the text slides. The text slides are most often used and most communicative. And any message you had to write down and tell people, then only they understand. If you just speak, the understanding is to lay about, say, 50%. But if you show and speak, the understanding or remembrance goes to about 80%. And adding a picture also, it goes to 95%. So text slides with your spoken words, they are very much there. However, you need not be verbose on the slide. Less is more. Some speakers put the entire paragraphs on the slide. The recent work of projecting the whole sentences on the screen and reading them aloud is deplorable. There is only one thing worse than reading the slide around. That is 
to point out each word as you do so. So, don't put large sentences and certainly do not use your pointer or uh, uh, beamer to show what is happening here. They say if your slide has more than 75 words, it is not a slide, it's a document. Look at this. This is not document, it's the entire thesis put down on this slide. It is better to send a copy of such a slide ahead of time to the audience. And then when you come to the stage, just start the discussion because there's so much to discuss on one slide. So these slides are deplorable. You shouldn't be using this. Here we are. Another slide of the same example. There's so much writing there that it is, it's a document. If you have a slide with 50 words or less, or around 50 words, then it's more of a teleprompter. Unfortunately, such slides are very, very popular. A lot of people put it down and then read it. And then they ask the question like, I hope you are not bored. Of course, I am bored with such slides. Who can't be bored? I mean, you may be working till 3 a.m., but I am bored right now. So there are disadvantages in using this kind of slide, which I can say is very popular. A lot of people put the stuff there and then go on reading it from there. This is out of uh, shortage of time to make plenty of rehearsal. They don't want to re remember or they don't want to that use a trick called presenter's view. In presenter's view, you can put a lot of time, a lot of material outside the view of the audience and then read it out there. They should still do it, but they don't follow those tricks. Here's another example of a teleprompter slide. The problem with this is that the material is too small to read in comfort. It's difficult to read this slide easily. <clears throat> and the other thing is that people read ahead of you and wait, and they judge you as a slow person, which is not a nice thing to happen. <clears throat> so try not to use those uh, slides. There was a time we used to go by this six, seven, seven rule. Six words in the title, seven words in a line, and seven lines a slide, and a lot of people followed it very rigorously, like this. This used to be a very good slide. However, it times are changed. It is a relic of past. In those days, uh, to make a slide, we had to first put down everything and hand it over to an artist who would either write down in ink or get, uh, get it typed on an electronic typewriter and then photograph it. Then the film would be developed and then process to become diagonal slide. And then we get that diagonal slide, something like this. And then he would cut them and then mount them on a cardboard and then hand them over. The whole process was long, very labor intensive, and it cost money to the presenter. So one was always very careful. So one without jumbling or without producing a document on the slide, one would number them and rational, rational them, and uh, that's fine. Times are changed. You can create thousands of slides in that time that you took 10 slides to make earlier. So <clears throat> what we do now is to cut down the number on the slide words to one or two sentences in a slide. For a slide which would normally cost five lines, you can have five slides, it costs nothing. And since you are going to talk one point after the other, even your time does not increase. It is the same sequence, one after the other. So a slide of five points or five bullets or five slides of one line each, same time is required. So one or two sentences is the slide. <clears throat> one sentence is headline, no more than two lines or even one or two lines is good enough. Less of the better. And your sentences should be meaningful. They should try to project your message in brief and clearly. For that, you have to do thinking. What I need, 
what I have to tell and what I'm going to say, what I can say and what slide I need to support my that. But thinking is a big problem. <clears throat> thinking to me is the greatest fatigue in the world. All of us feel very tired at the thought of thinking about something else. So don't do that. You must invest time in making meaningful slides and then rehearsing the presentation. Just making them, it takes too much time, then nothing, no time is left for rehearsing. Should balance both and at least rehearse a few times before you make any kind of presentation. Not all slides have one sentence. It doesn't have to be always one sentence slide. You can always use something like this, mainly for conclusion, etc. It's good to have three, four slides, but as a rule, less of the slide number, less of the material on the slide, better it is. To do this is simple, but it's not easy. You have to put in a lot of effort and then you can achieve this. Looks simple, but not easy at all. Now, in today's flyer, I had put down this particular slide because <coughs> the, the the font or the lettering is so complicated to read. I have put down that stuff on purpose just to make you aware that reading could be that difficult. And then I have put down a translation in a font which is so popular, so easily read. So the importance of what font you choose. What you see lettering, they come in different styles and there are a whole range of uh, numbers with fly. So each style is called a font. And the, to identify them, there is a name to those fonts. So basically is that the fonts would have some decorations, something like this. <clears throat> and these are called serifs. These decorations are called serifs. And the one with the other side has no decoration. It has only basic stuff. So no serif in French is sans. Sans serif and serif. These decorations. These are here, here. These are serifs, that is sans serif. So the rule of thumb is that don't use serif fonts very often. These are the examples and the names, Times New Roman or Baskerville, Old Philatic. These are the uh, serif font families. And these are this is showing the <laughs> these are the sans serif fonts. They do not have any any decoration. This is Century Gothic, Lucida, etc. These are again the name of the uh, name of the families that they do that. Use sans serif typeface always. There are several of these family uh, fonts you can see. Those do not have any decoration. I uh, use those fonts. Sans serif, they are bolder, business like, the best for short chunks of text. And as I said again and again, less of the text amount on the slide, better it is. Sans serif is your most suitable font. In each font, there are several uh, variations, like the regular, then bold, italic, condensed, and outline. Making permutation combination, you can make a variety without changing the font family. And with this, you can draw attention or reduce attention as need be. So, serif fonts, usually you can use also combinations. If you decide to use a combination, the serif or decorative fonts you should use in the title and sans serif fonts in the text. This is because the title has to be only single lines. While your message could run into two or three lines, so you want to make it easy for reading, and this is just decorative. Size of the font very important. <coughs> This font will be impossible to read in the hall of uh, 800 people. The last line will know nothing about it. This may be tolerable, but these two would be different. My recommendation is that your slide should be minimum 44 points. In this today's representation, the average font size is 60. If we use this large size, Hall of 2000 also will be able to read it in the very last line. So larger the better. 48 and larger in the text and minimum 36 points. This kind of combination you can use and that will be effective. 
when you are making it in the uh, computer, you want to be sure how to do it. Sit at a distance of seven feet. And if you can read your screen comfortably, then your font size is correct. This becomes a good test and you should follow. Seven feet distance, reading. You read everything, wonderful. You will be okay. Size matters, larger the better. Again, there are capital letters and normal letters. We call them uppercase and lowercase. What is uppercase, lowercase? The days when they did the uh, handset typing, each letter was composed and put down. The uh, capital letters were kept in this box, which was upper, and the regular letters were kept in this box, which is the lowercase. So they called it uppercase and lowercase. And the terminology has now remained. However, there are no compositor's box, no composition. Everything goes on the computer, so it works very well. These are the uppercase letters in the higher ones. Choose capital letters and lowercase consistently. English language has rules. What should be capitalized, what should not be capitalized. You should be particular about following that method. This is natural to read. The first letter is capitalized, the rest of it is lowercase. This is natural to read. But every other letter is capitalized. This is not natural to read. And this is absolutely all caps are unnatural to read. You can find it is difficult. Uppercase lettering is harder and therefore slower to read. Try that then. You have everything in uppercase, you will find it difficult to read. You must use it judiciously. Proper noun, first letter has to be capitalized. When you abbreviate, like IOA, BOS, CICOT, DNA, everything should be capitalized. When you write formulas, then there are rules which should be capitalized. In SI system, there are no plurals. This is a common mistake. It is 15 kilograms and not 15 kilograms. I would like to ask you something. What is the correct abbreviation for gram? Is it the capital G? Is it capital GM or GMS or G? Think about it. The correct abbreviation is small g. It's not G, GM, GMS, nothing. If it is 50, 1 gram, 50 gram, 500 gram, it is just this G. Nothing else. Common mistake. If you ever get stuck with the abbreviations and units, then this is an excellent site. You can send an email and very, very quickly you get all the correct answers. I use this all the time. When you write slides, you usually do not use full stop because you are not writing long letters, long uh, sentences, so small sentences do not require any full stops. Be brief, adopt SMS style writing. Texting is very common for the present generation. You should adopt that style, write SMS. However, you are not okay to write like that. Correct spellings are mandatory. You cannot just write, you are okay. You are not okay. Heavy are. This is Stinman Pin, I have pointed out. This is fine man and not still man. <clears throat> Live example from other people's slide, hard duke which. Again, the same presentation by the same person, he has spelled it correctly in this slide. But the earlier is hard duke which, when it should be hard duke which. And it's not that the person did not know, it is just carelessness. One has to be particular about these spellings. Ru Win Devi is the Ruth Win Davis. You should know exactly what is to be written, particularly names. You have to be very, very careful. Leave aside the spellings, even if you miss a hyphen. It could cause trouble. Just examine this. Six monthly doses. And six monthly doses. There is a difference. 
six doses, one to be taken every month. And the next line says, once in six months. So just a hyphen can make so much difference and a spelling will make a really big one. Some people now like to write in vernacular. No objection or no, nothing special. You like it, wonderful, you do it. But then you write it even in that vernacular correctly. In these five lines, there are five mistakes of writing. So it is not the language. It is not regional language or it is English language. It is the attitude. When you write in any language, make sure that it is written correctly. If you are not careful, it will cause spellings. Why we insist on so much that the spelling should be correct? Because the spelling error will stop someone from reading your slide. They might also assume that if there are spelling mistakes, there are other mistakes in your experiment and in your program. What you are telling may not be correct because your spellings are incorrect. They might think you are a bad writer, therefore a bad presenter. And that's why by, exper by experiment or by surgeon or whatever. They'll probably make more comments about you. Baat niklegi to dur talak jayegi. They will make more comments. The trouble caused by spelling errors far outweighs the effort required to correct them. And there is a computer to make it correct, uh, and you should use it. However, a computer is a monon. Spell check will not distinguish if you write plain or plain. It will okay it, but you have to decide which is the correct one between male and male, it will okay both of them if they are spelled correctly, but you have to decide. Computer checks are 95% dependable and one should use it every time you finish making a slide, you should use it. However, there are situations where you need to be present. Achilles tendon, ES is the correct spelling. But when you write it as tendo Achilles and you write ES, it is incorrect. I repeat, Achilles ES is like Achilles tendon is correct. While when you write tendo Achilles, this is incorrect. The, the correct spelling is Achilles, it becomes IS. So, if you use a computer, it will usually pass the ES spelling. So only you can decide that Achilles tendon it should be spelled like you. When you write tender Achilles, it should be IS. So one has to be careful. One should use the computer spell check, but also be extra vigilant, vigilant when special letters are required to be corrected. If you are someone who struggles mightily with the Willpower required to bear down and edit carefully after writing is done. Then for your own sake, honestly evaluate the source of your resistance and address it. After I came across this quotation, my attitude changed. Before that, I used to just pass away, personally look at but once I realized the importance of this quotation, now I examine everything in detail. Even an email before sending, I'll put him a, a spell check and then do again manual correction, then only say that. It's important to write correctly in any language that you choose. And the same time, I would say, edit ruthlessly before presenting. It's not only spelling, also the slides of all the time, drawings, pictures, video, etc. Apply this rule. Aid it ruthlessly before presenting. You will be forced to eliminate some of your favorite slides, but it is worth doing it. Remember, aid it ruthlessly before presenting. If you want to be an average presenter, uh, you don't need thesaurus, but if you want to be a superlative presenter, then you need a thesaurus. It's not proper to use the same words for the same meaning again and again. You need 
side by side different words also you <clears throat> if you pursue perfection you need thesaurus and we achieve excellence through pursuit of perfection <clears throat> When it comes to appropriate word, spell check doesn't help. It's only you who can either think about it or you can use thesaurus. Thesaurus gives you various combinations and various alternatives. And they also tell you about what is the sense of those alternatives. Then you can make an appropriate word. What is appropriate is a, is a very interesting thing, but it requires very fine thing. In, in fracture treatment, we always talk of interfragmentary moment or motion, IFM. We always say IFM. And we use words motion and moment interchangeably as synonyms. What is the appropriate word? If you, cons you concern thesaurus, you will come to conclusion that most appropriate word is motion. It is IFM is interfragmentary motion. And that only you come, if you go and read the thesaurus today, it is motion and moment, you will come to the same conclusion. And all the classic literature will call it interfragmentary motion. So appropriateness is something which is beyond spell check. It requires a lot of input from the presenter and it should be used. Just on a side step, I want to uh, I want to read out an ode or a limerick about what is an appropriate word you can address to a woman. This is not orthopedic, but it is interesting. You can call a woman something, but you cannot call a woman something else. So there is a small ode. I'm just going to read it out to you. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Call a woman a kitten but never a cat. You can call her a mouse, but never a rat. Call a woman chicken, but never a hen. Or you surely will not call her again. You can call her a duck, but cannot call her a goose. You can call her a deer, but never a moose. You call her a lamb, but never a sheep. Economic she likes, but you cannot call her sheep. You can say she is a vision, but you cannot say she is a sight. No woman is skinny, she is slender and slight. If she burns you up, call, she sets you afire, and you always be welcome, you would liar. So appropriate words, you can call something and not something, is very important, and that skill you must develop for yourself to become a good presenter. <clears throat> With that, we have first break as a question. If there are questions uh, after this long talk, we are able to answer them. Yeah. That was wonderful to listen to how to present. Alok, I'm sure you must be having some questions. Uh, so they are yet to come. Uh, they are not I, will, yes. I have some questions for sir. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. So... Now in the LED phase, do you will you still recommend the white background because it appears very bright, especially for the people who are sitting in the front screen? I did say, uh, Neeraj, that black, uh, white background is, that's why you should ask the organizers, what is the screen projection? And if they say it's LED, you should use dark backgrounds, maybe with graded uh, programs or something else, but not entirely white. They are very hurting in the eyes. And I have mentioned that during my talk. Okay. Yes. During the smaller, like a uh, small meetings, like we are doing for say 10 to 15 people in a room and uh, I don't want the light to go off and I'm using a projector. So what will be the recommended background in that? 
I'm not using a LED. I'm using a projector. Maybe I'm uh -huh. presenting to 20 people like I'm doing a workshop. And I don't want the lights to be off because they are also working with me. I want to see their faces, what they are doing. Your best choice is white background and black, black lettering. That is your best choice. Next best would be yellow and black because that is the most visible also. But uh, blue and white will also give you sufficient light. Black and white will not give any light and uh, leaves people under depression. So if you don't want to search off light, I would go for white and black, the which you are seeing just now. Okay. What about uh, your take on animations and transitions? Uh, not too many of them, and it's still to come. Uh, this is only half stop. Okay. 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 <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Dr. Chandak, do you have any question for him? No, nothing on my side. Okay. Okay. So okay then I'm... we'll proceed ahead. Yeah. We can proceed, sir. Proceed. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So says Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> People think, what can you do? What interesting thing can you do with just text? I can send you some example. Um, no, nothing fancy, just lettering in a different time. If it is green, if it wriggles, it's biology. If it does not work, it's physics. If it stings, it is chemistry. All we have done is use words and still you can make it a little interesting. Or you can use a little color also there. It is green. It is some animation and you can make it like that. Even without permission, you can still make a little work. You have habit, and it's very difficult to get rid of a bad habit. How? If you remove H, a bit remains. If you remove A, bit remains. If you remove B, it still remains. So it is very difficult for a bad habit to quit. So this kind of wordplay will be quite useful for you. It remains. <clears throat> this is a very good example of how you can, in one single slide, by changing the arrangement of the highlighting, you can project everything together. This is a busy slide, difficult, but once you go into details of it, what you can do with click of button, just stage one, and you have these three points. Stage two, again, different things are lighted. Stage three, stage four. So you can make one slide and then change the arrangement of uh, illumination or coloring and make it very effective, also very attractive. Lecture provides us with a fleeting opportunity to make our points. So we must make full use of it and send our messages in very succinct way so that everything is very, very, very useful. I am, uh, I am writing a book which will be provisionally titled as Improving a Perfect Medical Slide. So your slide is already perfect. Everybody who makes a slide thinks he is perfect. But how to improve that perfect medical slide, that's my endeavor. And I have made several uh, topics to discuss today. These are few and few more to come. But obviously, I can't go with all of them. And the Partions which are tick mark, that's what I'm going to do today. So from text slides, we go on to, I also wanted to posters for medical conferences. It's very useful for uh, most uh, people and very little is available on uh, making posters, but I don't think that's going to be possible today, some other time. So we go to the next section of my talk. which is about X-rays. Orthopedic surgeon and X-rays are, are two sides of a coin. They can't exist without X-rays. How to handle X-rays for presentation? We have to start with how to acquire X-rays, how to acquire image in position. Most people, what they do is put it on the view box and take a photograph. So not only the main X-ray, you get all the clips also for decoration there. This is the shabbiest way of doing things. 
what one should do is to use a modeling clay this is something like this very easily available in the uh, stationary shops and in fact you stick it to the corner of the x-ray and with that you can put it on the screen right in the center so the clips don't come up and then you can take photographs so then you get pictures without those clips and then you can throw in more detail of the pictures like this of course these days people are not using slr cameras most of us 95% of us are using uh, pocket camera our telephone cameras that's fine changing times and more convenient also i have an slr also and i was steadfastly using it till last year till i acquired this new telephone now i have not used my slr for almost a year i'm using only the phone so phone has got good cameras but you must know what to use how to use it just don't go in front of you you must invest in a stand like this and put it parallel to your viewing box and then take x rays when you take it with your hand invariably there is some amount of shake and that distorts the detail that you do not find when you are watching on a small computer when you blow it up your pictures don't look as clear as they should but if you invest in a stand like this and then take pictures there will not be any shake you will be able to focus it well and then take those pictures when you are taking it minimize the room in the light otherwise you will be able to identify the uh, the presenter also you can see in the background the person who is taking the photograph and sometimes you can also know who is there this is the reflection from the screen because there is a lot of ambient light the x-ray film reflects and then you get this kind of artifact which are not desirable so minimize the lights and then stay a little away from it stand will do the trick and then you will not have this kind of artifact lot of places are not digital cameras so you can transfer the x-rays from the directly from the machine x-ray machine you can come directly here is the screen from which you can do it this is screen from my own consulting room we have digital ones what i do is i select the patient i want to explore and then push a few buttons here and there and then i get it is done what i get is excellent quality pictures in this type however i should not be using them just as they come off the machine you got to do a little processing if you want to excel in your presentation first of all just get rid of this uh, inequality or the the information which is for you but not for public so get rid of this and you can color it dark so that becomes one thing and then on your computer screen you have sniping tool in windows or screenshot app in mac use it freely and with that you will be able to get rid of most of the extraneous thing and get your detail in limited things so out of those those two huge films i got two smaller pictures and again one should not use it just like that one should put it two together and darken the screen which is from outside now it is a presentable stuff so though you have got route from the screen uh, from the computer still you need to do some level of processing to make it presentable in a standard in a good way in an excellent way or nearly perfect way these are pictures straight from the uh, image interface hard disk and the quality is so much clearer and better from this yellow you would probably wonder what are these k wires doing in this tbia plating i can do a little explanation for you <clears throat> this is a trick to avoid the plate from going k wire you want it to go just along the tbia so i have placed wires on either side of the tbia some little percutaneous wires as you can see in this real photograph this is the width of the tbia and both sides there are k wires and the plate is going like this so as it goes it will be uh, this uh, to act as a railing and go straight way in the position and the same thing that you can see in these two wires 
it's a very handy trick. And since this is a, it's a presentation for orthopedic surgeons, I thought I will share this trick with you today. <clears throat> if you have pictures coming from uh, patients' x-rays or something, you still have to get rid of those top things by putting some kind of... Uh, And again, these are eyesores. You cannot just show like this. Uh, it's not a good way to doing it. You have to get rid of these, put a blank stuff there, and then present because this way. What we have done is put a rectangle dark there and put a rectangle dark here, put it together. And when this doesn't make up the whole screen, so I have used a dark background to make it. Now it becomes a presentable position. So. Just don't pull out the excess and show. Here it is. It doesn't make a good impression. Many cameras give you a color joke because they are geared for multicolor. Uh, this was a very common problem when we use the films. But even with digital, you get this kind of picture. If you a camera does not have control of the uh, to distinguish between color and black and white, then take this picture into Photoshop or Irfan view and, uh, and get it to a grayscale made of model. Once you do grayscale, the, it looks more original, it looks more uh, authentic. Also, the details become clearer than the last one. Here you can see, you can hardly make out the cement line here, but in the black and white. And we are used to seeing X-rays only in this color these shades of gray, not shades of blue and green. So it's worth using your program to get it changed to a shade that you are used to it. Now, besides that, there are bad pictures. He has used the, the slide format that, what, that Microsoft has provided, PowerPoint has provided. PowerPoint is designed by engineers an artist, they want, the photograph, they always want a mount, something like this. Our purpose as orthopedic surgeons is not appreciating the art, but we want to know what are the details. For that, we need to have this picture as big as feasible. If there is a screen available from here to here, then why are we not using almost 40% of the screen why are wasting it in decoration, which makes no appeal to you and me? This picture, if it extends from here to here, is far more attractive to me than what it is small. Attractive because it will show me more details. So don't follow what the PowerPoint gives it blindly. I never insert films like this. I use it on a blank sheet a blank over this thing and insert it and then resize it to extend from top to bottom. So you can see all the details that are available in one shot. <clears throat> like this, um, yeah, if you have good pictures, they get visible, but sometimes the lateral pictures are not bad. Then you can outline it with pencil or with some program so that the clarity becomes better. And if unless the picture is clear, do not show. If it is not clear, then do something what I had done like here. Outline, now you can make it out. Yes, this is lateral picture, good reduction, and then go ahead with this. So some amount of treatment is required for your X-ray. <clears throat> then you got a picture like this, and the screen is empty. So a lot of people stretch it out horizontally, and then it gets distorted. Again, if you have made your program in four by three and the, uh, the conference showing is 16 by nine, then it will get distorted like this. So when you get invitation, ask them what is their format, four, three or 16, nine. <clears throat> and whatever their format is, you stick to that, then the, your projection will be right. And whatever happens, do not stretch them out uh, horizontally or vertically. Always stretch them out diagonally and that gets a better production. If you are accessed to some uh, drawing program like uh, Coral Draw, then there is a method of, of enlarging it mathematically. Always use that 
that gives you a perfect uh, enlargement. If not, power point has got those squares, but pull them from the diagonals, not across, not vertical. This is proper projection and proper presentation. Such kind of presentations are very, very common. What information here is absolutely of no info, no importance at all. What is most important is this legion. And I would have been happy if it was shown from here to here and with a bold circle or something like this. And together with it, this was again stretched it out. This information the presenter could have just said because what it says is a diagnosis, uh, which is very obvious. And he's 17 years, that's also reasonably obvious because he could be 77 and get osteosarcoma, very rare, and limb salve. This is the MRI that we need to see. So this is wastage and this is bad planning. So always arrange your slides in such a way that you can make maximum, impl maximum impact with the information that you have, with the x-rays that you have, you should be able to impress people with. Same thing with MRI, CT scans, and sonography picture. This is a USG picture. Most people will show it like this, say you can clearly see the fluid level. I can't see anything, what fluid level? So if I slightly develop it and still say, I still can't make it out because this slide is going to be there on the screen for barely five to six seconds in which I'm expected to see everything. It's difficult. But if I add something like this, then you will see and understand in split seconds, where is the fluid level. Also, I have blackened the other area, so my visibility has improved as compared to what is here. There's so, distor so much distortion of light from the other side, but here it is focused, and I have shown you all the, all the slides, and all this is done by automatic computer handling. I have not, I'm not using, uh, I could have used, oh, here is the fluid level, here is the fluid level. I would have been wasting time. In one flick, I'm telling you everything. So that is the way to go with the computer. These are extremely busy slides and uh, it's difficult to help you. The speaker has also put down the operation notes here. It tells you what she has done and all those things. So slides like this, there's too much information. And if you, you remove extraneous information in the screen, it will actually increase our learning. Instead of so many pictures, if one would have showed one or two and then explain what it is, that would have been better. For example, in this picture, everything is there, all the heel toe, et cetera, et cetera, plus those so many pictures. And I have to understand this. If I were to redesign this, I would go a little differently. I would say first the stage dysfunction and they're not heel toe size. I'll show you the picture. Then the next would be the X-ray, which is normal, so we don't have to worry too much about. Uh, there's something special in the MRI. We assume that with the marker, etc. So it works very well. And then as a summary, I might give you non-surgical treatment and so on and so forth. So instead of just one jumbled side, make it three or four. It doesn't take more time. It will be fine. Some people want to show entire collection in one shot and they put on this thing and then go on either explaining or expect you to understand everything in one shot. That's difficult for an average uh, listener. So he tries for a second or two and then goes to sleep. That's not what we want. Instead, if you blow up each picture and talk about it, then it is fine. Some people go to the extreme level. This is concept here. And then I call these as mind-numbing presentations. Really, such presentations should be discarded totally. It's not worth doing it. Never do these things. <clears throat> if you want to add something, you can show the picture and then make a line sketch also to show that the blood supply under the locking plate can remain this way. That makes it more useful. 
putting drawings next to x-rays is very, very informative and it should be encouraged and should be tried here. <clears throat> now the fancy laser pointers and also the light pointers, I would say avoid pointers. Because for showing it on the screen, you have to turn around, look at the screen, search where it is on that enlarged portion, then point it and then show. So in that process, you lose about seven to eight seconds. And if you had to do this three or four times, you would have lost a considerable amount of time. Computer provides you with a great facility of moving the arrows or pointers extremely precisely and exactly the time that you want. Only thing you have to use the skills. These arrows could be moved in any fashion that you like or you would ever think about. <clears throat> Just to give you what are the capabilities, see everything is possible. Here, uh, to explain that the ray would, X-ray would first go and hit at this spot, I use one slide and then it goes in and casts a shadow, and that there is an overlap on the side. This all can be explained. And this way, and then why it is not right. Everything can be done without going for the screen. The great advantage in having computers uh, arrows in use is that you can face the audience all the time. You do not have to look at the computer of your projection screen and explain and waste time. This way you do not lose contact, do not lose eye contact with the audience. You can gauge their reactions and they also find it easy to follow. Secondly, in many conferences, there are multiple screens. If you use the uh, mouse arrow, then it is only seen on the prime screen. It is not seen on the subsidiary screen. But if you use the computer arrows, they are seen everywhere the figure is seen. So great advantage of using these arrows. They can be programmed and they can be used uh, very well. So on this, uh, so far, if there are questions, we'll go ahead because X-ray handling is prime stuff for us. Uh, that's why I'm... Uh, sir, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So the question is from Dr. Gautam Salunke from Pune. So for a bad presentation, uh, like in well presenting, the review of literature, it utilizes many slides and time. Would one slide with the table having the literature serially with columns, like mentioning the author, journal, and the details can be done for better understanding? What are the pros and cons? <laughs> It's quite fashionable to do the references at the bottom of the slide. Now that is useful only if your audience is clicking the screen all the time. Most of the conferences will say that taking photographs is illegal. So whatever you're showing is officially or legally cannot be copied. And to expect somebody to remember all those references in a jiffy, it is even difficult for Brahaspati to do that. He was such uh, ordinary mortals like us. So to me, that is a clutter on the side. But if somebody clicks that shot, it is extremely useful to him. Whether he's doing it legally or illegally, that is another question. So I don't approve of this. Second reason I don't approve of it that when they ask you to talk, they take it for granted that you are talking for, uh, based on certain things. Every second, I don't want to ask, what is the reference? What is the reference? If it was that, I will not ask you to come here only. If I am trusting my time with a presenter, I will take whatever he is saying. I am not going to ask him all the references, etc. That giving references is good for printing material. When you are writing a paper, you have to give all the references and that is the right place to do. Putting it on the screen to me looks superfluous for the reasons I just said. Uh, sir, I have a query. So sometimes uh, we have already taken an x-ray and nowadays because the world is changing, what is happening is that our assistants are sending us x-rays on WhatsApp. 
so they have taken already an x ray in a certain way so what i used to advise everyone when i used to conduct these courses is that you should at least you should split the x rays so basically if the name has come or something has come you should split the x rays into two basically make one image so you have received ap and lateral as one image so you post it twice on the uh, powerpoint slide and cut and crop the ap part in one and lateral part in one so you have two x rays and maybe this keep it close to each other so it looks like a one x ray what is your take on that yeah it is another trick and you are a master of computer tricks in there right? you know all those things what the point is that you can't make the entire film and just put it there and say this is the x-ray you have to do some kind of processing hmm. and that processing is of different types you can do it this way you can do it that way but it should look neat it should withhold patient's uh, information on that when we are showing it to everybody else but it should give you the details so you can zoom in enlarge do whatever your interest is you can bring it out by processing it the message you and me both want to give is don't take the raw film from the x-ray machine and then put it on the screen do some kind of processing so you bring out the best in that x-ray for the audience that is all so one more one more trick which i would like to advise people especially who have their own x-ray machines like you and i have our own nursing homes where we have x-ray machines and cr system of our own so if you make the technician of that cr system work a little hard those images can actually be pushed especially in this covid area those images can actually be pushed to your laptop even via wifi which is happening in my own hospital and if not wifi at least wired lan to your computer to your basic windows computer where you are sitting on your cabin so you don't have to touch the film and at the same time you get a perfect soft copy which you can use it later on in your presentation which is saved in your computer yeah i mean talking of technology recently somebody showed me a cassette uh, which as what all the things all you got to do is to use that cassette on patient anywhere and the cassette has wifi and all other things so all the data from the cassette is directly sent to your computer there is no fuji machine to process that mm-hmm. that cassette records the image and sends it to your personal computer uh, like whatever you have and you can process it and see from that so technology is usually advanced as you say wired one i have stopped going to radiology department whatever is shot there comes to my table in 30 second no less than 30 second so when i see the patient i see on this computer and if you can see in the background there is a screen here uh, which is connected to my computer and when i see this the patient sees on on this so they do not pin to my computer they are sitting right in front there they can watch this uh, screen and i can watch this thing and as i as i discuss here they can see over there <laughs> so lot of things can be done and they should be done to improve our working condition this impresses patient so many times i show the screen so you know all it is and they will say sir we don't understand you tell us something so <laughs> that kind of jokes would go on but uh, all those tricks should be done the messages whatever is recorded needs to be modified for presentation you cannot just pick it up and then throw in front of the audience that should not be done so to clarify what sir has said is there are two types of system one is the cr system which we everybody has where our cassette goes into the machine it processes it and then it shows on the computer besides the machine and that system manually somebody has to push the image to your computer either using the wired lan or wirelessly that is one system second system what he was describing is the dr system that is a real digital x ray where the cassette once you have shot the x ray with a just a cassette it automatically shows on the computer without any processing yeah that's the one which uh, dr system cassette that's on the i just yes, yes. you have a personal computer that is the fun of it that is the fun of it yes uh, in smaller places uh, the larger radiologists are not available that is most useful and you can carry it anywhere where there is an x ray machine you have a digital x ray mm-hmm. as well regarding one presentation i wanted to ask what is the advantage in using a keynote presentation any 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 advantages the on the macbook 
keynote and uh, PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Yeah. Uh, equally powerful for you and me. Okay. Keynote has some fancy uh, ways of moving the slide in and out and other things. But for medical presentation, there yes. is no special advantage of one system or another. It is how you are used to it, how okay. you like it. I have both the systems, um, uh, key, a keynote and as this thing, but somehow I am hooked to PowerPoint. I find it easier to use it and I don't use key, but both are equally same. Equally. Okay. There is no need to say this system yeah. is better or that. Yeah. They are same. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it seems you have a question. Yeah. Sir, in case in case of overshooting of time, how do we sum up the uh, things? Sum up the lecture if you are overshooting. That is yeah, what yeah. you are. Yeah. I'm going to show that thing at the end. Okay. <laughs> you are going to overshoot. Neeraj okay. has already warned me four o'clock. He has to shut us down. So uh, that would be. See, there is there is one way is in planning. You don't go the Sherlock Holmes way so that your important point is left behind. You tell them right in front. Secondly, uh, you always want to conclude very clearly, uh, very strongly. So you should record the number of the slide, which is uh, from where the, your uh, conclusion starts or very emphatically you close it. And suppose it is 32 or 42 or whatever. In this mode, in the full projection mode, you type 42 from the keypad and enter. You, are, you will go directly to that slide without anybody knowing that you have gone through. There is no need to cram this down. I can show, I mean, I don't know. I, I have not remembered anything today, so I can't do that. But uh, <coughs> yeah, I can do that, why not? 42. Uh, see, I got to this without you knowing where it is. Only trouble is now, I don't know where to. Come back. I'll... You can just slide back. Ah, so that is how it is. This is a clear trick. You have to enter that number and enter the enter enter, and you will go to the next slide without leaving in between slides, and then you can take it from there. That's a very sleek way of doing it. Thirdly, you should under prepare. If your time is eight minutes, prepare it for seven minutes. Invariably you will overshoot by half a second. So that kind of stuff. There's no hard and fast rule. And also practice. The presenter you become. If you have, there, is, there was one extension to his answer. So technological uh, extension. So if you have prepared your summary slides and if you have say maybe mm -hmm. In towards the end, uh, there are two, three cases. So what you can do is maybe you can complete one case and there are shortcuts depending on what computer you use, Mac or Windows, where you can directly send your presentation from, say, supposing you have 30 slides and you're on slide number 22 and you want to go directly on 28. So there are shortcuts of going to that slide number 28 directly. So you can create a shortcut where it will directly take you to a slide number 28, which will be your last two, three summary slides. So that is how you can finish your presentation on time without the judge or the uh, so listeners knowing that you had actually three cases behind this. Neither. That is a trick. Systems, if you type the number of the slide and enter, you will reach that slide. That is the yeah. shortcut. Yeah, that is a shortcut, yes. That is the shortcut. So there is a question from Dr. Shiv Shankar, sir. Which color in a slide is absolute no-no? Is there any relation with color blindness? Which color? Yeah. Which color in a slide is absolute no? <laughs> no, there is nothing like absolute no. In fact, uh, in that proposed book of mine, there is an entire chapter on colors. What are the qualities of color? What type of color, etc., etc., etc. And for final work, it is uh, good to use that. But there is no absolute no no for a color. You can uh, use any color and uh, take the day. Okay. Okay, the message is strong and clear. Uh, everything is pardonable. So another yeah, question. Look. Yeah, go ahead. How do we make the first introduction slide very effective? Like the surgeon, introduction, title, degrees, hospital, name, fellowship, etc. 
how do we make it very effective a surgeon's name and uh, hospital site etc yeah <laughs> i think that's the items we need not make them very effective <laughs> because if your message is effective they will come searching for you uh, otherwise <laughs> you go on uh, showing the institute you work and put down on the uh, front of it nocturn and any rest is nothing much happened so by the way if you had to still go simplicity you can use one single slide surgeon's name hospital name one after the other instead of cluttering you put only one sentence on the screen people will read it anyway and that will become more effective so personally i would be not very keen on doing that sir so there is a message there is a message from dr rajendra vankhe most of the conferences ppts are saved in P, uh, ppt mode and not in keynote so presenter has to convert it preferred is to have both in conferences see most of the vendors have got microsoft uh, equipment they usually have windows because they are cheaper and multi use uh, apple computers uh, macintosh were very expensive to start with and they were not easily available so the vendors didn't have it so since the windows has become a norm in conferences uh, they continue to it also earlier there was issue with the software the apple computer would not talk to the microsoft computer now both the companies have made compromises and programs from one to another they are interchangeable to a great extent so with that this is becoming less and less to which keynote uh, or on that uh, For projects point of view, I think Microsoft, uh, sorry, Apple computers are better technically. That's what I think. I'm not sure. But from presenter's point of view, we, it makes zero difference. Neeraj, what is it you say? So the advantage, I'll tell you the advantage. The Apple computers have the Microsoft Office. so it has got an advantage that the keynote and the powerpoint both will work very well in it where with a very few exceptions so the main exception is that i am not sure that most of the apple computers will play a wmv file that is a windows media video file which is embedded in the powerpoint but if you have the latest powerpoint installed in any of the computers basically if the latest powerpoint version that is a microsoft 365 which is updated to the latest one or even for that matter you have 2016 and above version all the videos work very seamlessly wherever you put it exception is that only one that wmv will not work in a apple computer and mov that is a quick time may or may not work in the windows computer so the best and the safest bet today is that you update your office to latest version whether you are using windows or mac that is one and second thing is that you have to have a mp4 mp4 video format so that those things usually work universally okay yeah that's it sir okay sir you can continue with the presentation okay so having done excerpts we should deal with some photographs also <laughs> don't bother with what just show the picture that's what da vinci said he himself was a great artist so he could draw all the pictures so he would just do that where do we use uh, photographs or where you should use or where when the description is very complex uh, then you should use a photograph now to describe this yoga pose is going to be very difficult so best is to show this picture and say this is such and such position uh that's easy that's a good use of picture if you have an unusual object then pictures are photographs pictures are very useful this lady had this plate exposed in this bathroom for 3 years she had bandaged it and meticulously kept it clean there was no infection and she lived like this for 3 years before we persuaded her to get it out so unusual stuff you should use a picture when you show a picture orientation of the picture is very important you should uh, leave no doubt about the orientation of the picture most people will show something like this four pictures and say you can clearly see that i am digging out at the spine i can't make a word out of it secondly 
this is presentation is like as if this is a photo frame. This is the frame outside a mount, and then these are four shots. We don't need this kind of presentation in PowerPoint because it makes no purpose. It only it only helps the ego of the presenter that I showed them so many pictures. The poor viewer suffers a lot. He cannot even complain to him individually and understands nothing. So don't use these photo frames at all and don't put so many pictures. One can only look at one picture at a time. In that time, maybe one second, two seconds, three seconds, but it is going to be concentrated only on one, 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 one. So if you have to show this, show four pictures and describe. So we have blown it up and said, oh, here it is on the seventh vertebra. Honestly, it's difficult to make out what is what, where is what. This is abdomen, thorax, or back of the thigh. It's difficult. So if you insist on showing photographs of your surgery, do some work, and also put down a sketch on the top of it. Now, I don't even have to say what is happening. At such and such level, you are working. It's wonderful. Now I can make out this spine. You have got a curate and this tuberculosis, and you are curating it out. Wonderful. But without so much, just showing those four pictures makes no sense. Waste my time and your energy. <coughs> then orientation is again important. The first picture, I'm saying the standard surgical expression, the patella is on my right hand side. In the very next picture, I show that patella is on the left hand side. I'm trying to understand your modified surgical location. Is that you change my rotation by 180 degrees? I am thoroughly confused and disgusted. So if you have to show pictures, then maintain standard orientation. And it's so easy, you can flip this picture horizontally in PowerPoint and do the same thing. Now, in the modified wing, you have got the patella on the same side as the first one. I understand what is modified without getting confused. So photographs, what you see, you are the one who understands them most. The people in the audience are looking at it for the first time. The thing should be explicitly clear so that they can understand in those five to seven seconds that picture is on the screen. Anything short or any confusing orientation is going to waste your time, their time, and they will not understand it. Now, this comparative photographs are very well. There is a wastage of muscles here, and the cause is shown here. Two together, wonderful. They also tried to show the EMG studies, but that is too much. I would have split this in two and then go this way, but it's a good attempt to do that. Photographs are best for before and after work. Uh, something was like this and it's changed like this. It's very good work. Synthetic hair transplant. You have changed man's life, but you also put down this kind of check, artificial. Research. This information the presenter can give verbally and make use of this entire slide. This small picture, the area of interest is this and this. So you put that as the smallest function and use the other area for this is all useless for me. Why do you want to use it? So I would have personally changed this slide to something else. Now I can see the area of interest. I can see the difference before and after. And one line, I know what you have. Other things, I expect the presenter to tell me verbally. So then I have heard it. I have seen it. I will remember for a long time. This is the way to use a photograph in your presentation. Also, graphically, you can make convey so much better. Like this is pros and cons. Cons are on the lower side. This can be made very easily in PowerPoint by anybody and get the impression. So making a diagram, you have to first think put a lot of a lot of struggle in it, and then you can make very interesting or very effective presentations. Showing these pictures in this is, I have failed to understand why this picture was put here. All they are describing history and physical and etc. 
And this joke doesn't go on to this. And this was an international presentation. What is probably easy in, in Canada is not easy in India. So this kind of picture is flop, it's, it's diversion, as serving no purpose whatsoever. <clears throat> Another picture is examination of the uh, flag of the gate, the foot is going on. Some deformity to the foot. Kevas foot, Kevas father's foot. What has a king stroke to do with Kevas father's foot? If there was something to do with the knock knees or valgus knees or retro knees, then I would have understood. Kevas foot, what does king stroke to do? Nothing. So this is a diversion, entirely unrelated. Instead of this, if she would have put in another picture, that would have been okay. Or simply make a blow up of this, I would have understood better. King Stark is simply a diversion. Irrelevant pictures can be detrimental to learning. With computer, we have hundreds and thousands of pictures. Some people act by special uh, separate disk of one trillion, one TB and store pictures on them. You don't have to bring them all here unless they are increasing the understanding of the topic you are discussing. Irrelevant pictures should not be used in any presentation. Again, I am showing you this picture. Nobody can say, where is this? Is this a knee? Is this an arm? Is this an elbow? Is it thigh? What is it? Totally confused. But I put it in some orientation with some montage, and I don't have to even say a word. You have understood what it is. Simply by putting the X-ray, giving the orientation that this is the upper end of tibia, and I see a swiss there, and I'm curating it. Just flashing that picture tells you everything. I don't have to say a word. So make some imagination and make the best out of your pictures. Just don't splash them. <clears throat> now this is a picture, a detailed drawing, and possibly I have borrowed it from somewhere else or picked it up, but I have made sure that you would be guessing. Had I presented it just like this, you would have immediately understood that I have picked it up from some book. And uh, you would have said, it's a book. But when I show it something like this, I send you guessing where I have got it, some kind of mystery. And for that second, then I'm going to be talking about it, sir. So when you borrow, and I'm sure you borrow all the time, you I also borrow all the time, what you should do is try and conceal the source. Originality is the art of concealing your source. So it is all. don't make it obvious. It diminishes your value in the eyes of the, of the audience. And that is not the aim of your presentation. Be ethical. You may thank the author at the end, but at that moment, try to hide the, origin, uh, the source. Words, they say too many words. Hospital bed, how you define? This is the definition given by the NHS. A device is an arrangement that may be used. Da, 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 da. Instead of talking this all, what you can do is a picture is worth a thousand words. All these words, you say, what is a hospital bed? You may just simply show them a hospital bed. Everybody understand this is a hospital bed, no question asked. However, what type of bed you show, you have to be very choosy. This is also a hospital bed. But I had to make decision which bed to choose. Girls in bikini are difficult to handle on screen or otherwise also. So one must be very careful in showing pictures like this. If you can handle it, it's wonderful. If you can't, just avoid them. Everything you add to your slide should have a positive impact on your message. So a cheesy picture, if it has a message and is adding image to your presentation, certainly use it. 
otherwise suppress that desire to show your favorite collection or your private collection is very tricky be very careful now realistic drawings and cartoons are also very useful this kind of once in a while you can always uh, show something like this and give them a little break or even evoke a laughter i use this in my anterior dislocation uh, reduction program is and this you can use it like this sometimes we get a funny cartoon and we like to show that if it is relevant but it is difficult to read the uh, the lettering because it is in a different way so it may be wise to put it in little bold fashion that you can read it as you have been working too hard instead of a hard bit i am getting a fact stone so you can do it but then you have to do a little working on it you can't just insert and hope that it will give you the best thing this is my most favorite political uh, uh, cartoon this is somebody like mr bashpai atal bihari and this is something like chitranjan ranavan what he is asking uh, you can read it but then i have put it down here what is it this time the right knee or the left knee or adwani so that could evoke some kind of laughter or pleasure but it is tricky situation and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work think twice before using such thing simple line sketch it is so clear we know that you can use ordinary sutures to use as a tension band to support that they felt wonderful it works very well simple nothing complicated anybody can draw and show pictures like this you can do and you can use it in two ways one is some uh, entire picture and then okay these are straight from the net they are available and if it is suitable one can use it so here again some things from the net and it's working serial disclosure drawings as i have been using this thing you can use this thing in two ways either you one picture and use an arrow which will go like this and next you can then explain how it is or you can make multiple pictures of this uh, like this the thing moves then you can explain that this stage this stage this stage is this stage you can do various thing this is all done with the help of drawing programs which this is not possible in powerpoint you need a drawing program like corel draw or a free hand or a adobe illustrator but it can be done it can be done by orthopedic surgeon because this has been done by me uh, it's not uh, you need some super quality uh, artist or that it, it can be used like this so we have, many of us are tempted to use micro pictures uh, this is not our domain at all so you should be extremely careful when you use uh, slides of uh, histology i remember one occasion one very eminent surgeon gave a catheter correction and he decided to use uh, his students thesis as a topic probably he had guided it so he had the moral right to use that but about the histology pictures he was so lost that he could not show exactly what it is so if you decide to use uh, slides micro slides like this then remember first you should put up a uh, scale there without fail so it gets perfect and either you can learn that slide or best is to use computer arrows to be specific what you want to show once you are way of identifying that is uh, taken care of then you can describe it as you like otherwise you have to go to the screen and then point it out and then show it takes time and you could be wrong with this you will be 100% sure because when you are setting up the program you can always ask the student to come and help you with the exact cell uh, that you want to show the audience and do this <laughs> so this tricks computer facilitates all this and we must take the full advantage of that
can make sketches and then with the help of the computer you can also go on uh, doing animation and express your views very very clearly so many tricks uh, how to take x-rays you can animate them make it very very clear <laughs> or give an example of what things are going to happen all animation in powerpoint works very well so there are so many tricks that pictures with the, but every time you use it you must be sure that it is making an impact just because i am able to do this kind of trickery i don't have to show it off in a medical presentation inserting video is the most common cause of failure even if you are taken care of what uh, neera just now said that you have the right thing but when you are inserting it and you are talking it uh, it will fail 90% of the time unless you are going to do what i am going to tell you just then make it start automatically that is the only way it works wonderful now in windows it is very easy you insert that and after having inserted then you go for video tools in that video tools you have got there this section play and with that play you you get into this start thing then you get this click sequence you get three choices click sequence automatically or when clicked the safest way is to select automatically so as you come to the slide the video will play automatically when you do add click you have to first find the mouse then go to the right spot then click at the start and then the computer starts learning is a big video it takes splits 3 4 seconds so when you manually do it usually you waste or you spend about 5 to 6 seconds in a hall full of 900 people 5 seconds of inaction is 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 awesome it's too much it is very very uh, it's intolerable so always use it automatically if you have got other animations in that like uh, uh, any other movement or uh, appearance or disappearance or something then you click in click in sequence then what happens is as it number comes the video will play automatically so if you are a novice or you're just starting to use videos use automatically if you are master then you can also use click sequence but never use when clicked 99.9% you will be embarrassed when using that trick in apple computer also there are facilities this is a little more complicated and since i am not very used to it i am not showing you here but there is this same thing can be done there as well automatically is the only thing just to summarize i am saying here with clever and then go for automatic and that is your best luck <clears throat> just graphics no use words in graphic you show some picture and make a commentary that makes better impression slide making is a science is also an art and what we put together we are say that it is a slide ology slide ology really is name of a book is the title of a book by this lady who is an expert in powerpoint presentations and general communication skills she has written a book called slide ology i only borrowed it for today's lecture slide ology and there is a method of may and it's worth reading it but i before i leave i'm going to talk to you about seven virtues of a good slide what's a good slide how will you remember a good slide there are seven things it is appropriate it is accurate it is legible, legible. it is well executed simple interesting 
and memorable. All these seven points, if the slide is like this, you will remember. And what would you remember? <coughs> Now, this slide is everything. It is appropriate, it is accurate, it is legible, it is well executed, it is simple, and it is interesting. If you are able to add a wing to it, then you will also make it memorable. So, ladies and gentlemen, it was a pleasure talking to you on this. Uh, the remaining add-on is available, but I think the time is uh, not available for this. And uh, we'll have to go for the question answer here. And uh, Iraj, we don't have time today for additional 30 minutes, no? Iraj, can we continue for a few minutes more? So, Two minutes will be question answer. Uh, so. So why don't we take this as a separate lecture only, radiographic positioning? You have anyways made it. We'll take it next week as a separate lecture and give you full justice to it. That will be better, I feel. So a politically correct statement. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be fine. So only one question uh, on my thing. Uh, Dr. Shiv Shankar wanted to ask, which color in a slide is absolutely no-no that you answered? But is there any relation with a color blindness onto the? Yeah, color blindness is usually associated with green and red colors. Okay. So, uh, but when you say color blind, it doesn't mean that the person affected with color blindness does not see anything. He does not see the red as you and me see. He sees it as a some shade of brown. But with his uh, orientation or with his uh, drawing up, he understands that this shade that he perceives as a uh, brown or something is red shade and he behaves accordingly. Uh, using in slides, uh, uh, green for good and red for bad is the common thing, but that should not be used because these people colorblind. And usually about 10 to 15% people in general population are colorblind. So they may get confused if you show, use that color green for good and red for warm or something like green for positive and red for negative. Then these colorblind people will get affected. Otherwise, there is no harm using red and green in the computer. Hello, you have a question? Yes. Yeah, yes, sir. there is a question. So what is the trick for taking a good interoperative x-ray? Always OT light is an issue. Yeah, OT light is an issue. You are, see with the camera phones, uh, what is usually done is take away the, uh, all the lights on the field and the camera phone has got all the software to improve the lighting as you require. So acquire the image and then to improve it further, go into Photoshop and make the best of it. So with the software available, now bad pictures are not on at all. You must learn the skills of Photoshop to some extent. Photoshop is a professional thing. It comes in two volumes. One is the starter pack or a home, um, uh, home uh, program and one for the professionals. So the photographers who make money out of it, they use those professional ones and they are, that volume is very expensive. For home use, it is cheap, I think 50 to $100. Everybody can uh, buy that and get master on it and our photographic skills would improve tremendously. I don't use Photoshop, but my friend uses, uh, he's so good at it that any problem in my X-ray, I send him the copy. He repairs it and sends it to me. He is a urologist working in Detroit, but on email distance is no bar, and he is very good at that. So all my X-rays that you see in my presentation or in my books, they are all photoshopped by my friend, and it works wonderfully. So you need some modification these days, and with the software, it is very, very easy. So you have to just get used to this. I'll get mastery on that and you should be okay. Yeah. <clears throat>
thank you sir thanks for sharing those wonderful tips uh, look i think this would be really a yeah, good uh, definitely sir value for all of us uh, we would be definitely benefited with this thing uh, any questions remaining we can take up those questions otherwise it's it's, it's a moment for thanking uh, dr anand thakur profusely and uh, all of this uh, lectures from you sir leave an aura in the minds of all those who are listening those who are listening the first lecture i i see they are listening all the lectures from your side that speaks of the amount of information they get and and their basic knowledge we get even for slides i learned a lot in this uh, and uh, sansare the technical or the real name i have never understood that but i could listen and i could uh, know that also so they were really useful uh, uh, piece of information in all of your lectures anything uh, alok you would like to say or uh... sir, sir has been fantastic like his uh, seven virtues of uh, making a slide like it should be appropriate accurate it should be eligible well executed and interesting and memorable was fantastic and he even told us what not to do what not to be there should be there in the slide the color and all the different things uh, what picture should not be there i mean it was it was like a good uh, lesson yeah. learning for all of us i hope even the technology wizard like uh, neeraj also would have learned something i have learned a lot <laughs> yeah. i always learn see i always learned the first program before i started doing my course in 2011 i have attended his lecture on how to make a pop effective presentation many years back when i was a very young orthopedic surgeon i think it happened first time during 2005 or 6 i don't remember at that time so it was that was the first time when i actually attended so uh, dr thakur was telling me before the talk that today will be his last but somehow it will not be his last because he has one more presentation which we will be taking next week that also would be really very useful various radiographic positions and uh, people would be looking forward to that if sir agrees yeah it's not me it is audience or there is a great demand to take break from this <laughs> series no sir this is basically we need to do these webinars now yeah. because we are all sitting at home yeah, yeah, but sure, later sure. on it will be your your webinars have one thing which basically many mm -hmm. webinars don't have is that it's got a rewatch value so even if i am not seen today tomorrow i will go and search for it and see it when i am making a presentation or tomorrow when i am doing a tension band i will go and review it the tension band lecture of yours so basically i think it has got more rewatch value than current yeah. worship uh, thank you for your uh, comments but i need to do something for myself <laughs> i have to learn a computer program and i had bought this last year somehow i could not get it when the uh, this started i said now my chance and the doctor chandak rang me up and uh, and, 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 and so it's six <laughs> sir if you have time we can take it on any day when you are taking a break from coral draw if i don't learn it now it will be i will have to wait for another lockdown which is not a nice thing to even think so i need two weeks break if the lockdown goes beyond uh, then i will do it on second of june okay thank okay, you sir much. absolutely and fine perfect जून Uh, feedback from audience they need a break <laughs> okay thank you thank you very much thank you thank, thank you, you very much bye thank you thank you sir